In linguistics, clusivity is a grammatical distinction between inclusive and exclusive first-person pronouns and verbal morphology, also called inclusive. We. An exclusive. We. Inclusive. We. Specifically includes the addressee, that is, one of the words for. We. Means. You and I and possibly others. While exclusive. We. Specifically excludes the addressee, that is, another word for. We. Means. He, she, they and I, but not you. Regardless of who else may be involved. While imagining that this sort of distinction could be made in other persons, particularly the second, is straightforward, in fact the existence of second-person clusivity, you versus you and them, in natural languages is controversial and not well attested. The first published description of the inclusive-exclusive distinction by a European linguist was in a description of languages of Peru in 1560 by Domingo de Santo Tomás in his Grammatica o Arte de la Lengua General de los Indios de los Reinos del Peru, published in Valladolid. Lead, Spain. Schematic paradigm Clusivity paradigms may be summarized as a two by two grid. Morphology In some languages, the three first person pronouns appear to be unrelated. This is the case for Chechen, which has singular so, so exclusive txo, though and inclusive ve. In others, all three are related, as in Tok Pisin, an English Creole spoken in Papua New Guinea, singular me, exclusive me pela, and inclusive you me, a compound of me with you, you, or you me pela. However, when only one of the plural pronouns is related to the singular, it may be either one. In some dialects of Mandarin Chinese, for example, inclusive or exclusive wo men wo men women is the plural form of singular wo. I. While inclusive zan men zan men zan men is a separate root. However, in Hadza it is the inclusive one beya, which is the plural of the singular ono, one. I. While the exclusive u beya is a separate root. It is not uncommon for two separate words for. I. To pluralize into derived forms having a clusivity distinction. For example, in Vietnamese the familiar word for. I. Ta pluralizes to inclusive we chung ta and the polite word for I. Toy pluralizes into exclusive we chung toy. In Samoan, the singular form of the exclusive pronoun is the regular word for I. While the singular form of the inclusive pronoun may also occur on its own, in which case it also means I. But with a connotation of appealing or asking for indulgence. In the Kunama language of Eritrea, the first person inclusive and exclusive distinction is marked on dual and plural forms of verbs, independent pronouns, and possessive pronouns. Distinction in verbs Where verbs are inflected for person, as in Australia and much of America, the inclusive exclusive distinction can be made there as well. For example, in Passamaquoddy, I, we have it, is expressed. Singular n t h i n first person prefix n. Exclusive n t h i n n first person n plus plural suffix n. Inclusive k t h i n n inclusive prefix k plus plural n. In Tamil, on the other hand, the two different pronouns have the same agreement on the verb. First person clusivity. First-person clusivity is a common feature among Dravidian, Kartvelian, and Caucasian languages, Australian and Austronesian, and is also found in languages of Eastern, Southern, and Southwestern Asia, Americas, and in some Creole languages. Some African languages also make this distinction, such as the Fula language. No European language outside the Caucasus makes this distinction grammatically, but some constructions may be semantically inclusive or exclusive. Singular inclusive forms Several Polynesian languages, such as Samoan and Tongan, have clusivity with overt dual and plural suffixes in their pronouns. The lack of a suffix indicates the singular. The exclusive form is used in the singular as the normal word for I, but the inclusive also occurs in the singular. The distinction is one of discourse, the singular inclusive has been described as the modesty I. 
In Tongan, often rendered in English as one, while in Samoan its use has been described as indicating emotional involvement on the part of the speaker. Second person clusivity In theory, clusivity of the second person should be a possible distinction, but its existence is controversial. Some notable linguists, such as Bernard Comrie, have attested that the distinction is extant in spoken natural languages, while others, such as John Henderson, maintain that the human brain does not have the capacity to make a clusivity distinction in the second person. Many other linguists take the more neutral position that it could exist but is nonetheless not currently attested. Clusivity in the second person is conceptually simple but nonetheless if it exists is extremely rare, unlike clusivity in the first. Hypothetical second person clusivity would be the distinction between you and you and you and you all present and you and someone else whom I am not addressing currently. These are often referred to in the literature as 2 plus 2 and 2 plus 3, respectively, the numbers referring to second and third person as appropriate. Horst J. Simon provides a deep analysis of second person clusivity in his 2005 article. He concludes that oft-repeated rumors regarding the existence of second person clusivity or indeed, any plus three pronoun feature beyond simple exclusive we, are ill-founded, and based on erroneous analysis of the data. Third person clusivity Obviative, abbreviated OBV, third person is a grammatical person marking that distinguishes a non-salient, obviative, third person referent from a more salient, proximate, third person referent in a given discourse context. The obviative is sometimes referred to as the Fourth person Distribution of the clusivity distinction The inclusive-exclusive distinction occurs nearly universally among the Austronesian languages and the languages of Northern Australia, but rarely in the nearby Papuan languages. Tok Pisin, an English Melanesian pidgin, generally has the inclusive-exclusive distinction, but this varies with the speaker's language background. Closing parenthesis. It is widespread in India, among the Dravidian and Munda languages, as well as in several Indo-European languages of India such as Marathi, Rajasthani, Punjabi, Sindhi, and Gujarati, which either borrowed it from Dravidian or was retained as a substratum if Dravidian was displaced, and in the languages of eastern Siberia, such as Tungusic, from which it was borrowed into northern Mandarin Chinese. In indigenous languages of the Americas it is found in about half the languages, with no clear geographic or genealogical pattern. It is also found in a few languages of the Caucasus and Sub-Saharan Africa, such as Fulani and Koko. It is, of course, possible in any language to express the idea of clusivity semantically, and many languages provide common forms that clarify the ambiguity of their first-person pronoun, English. The rest of us. Italian noyaltry. A language with a true clusivity distinction, however, does not provide a first-person plural with indefinite clusivity, where the clusivity of the pronoun is ambiguous, rather, the speaker is forced to specify, by choice of pronoun or inflection, whether they are including the addressee or not. This rules out most European languages, for example. Clusivity is nonetheless a very common language feature overall. Some languages with more than one plural number make the clusivity distinction only in, for example, the dual, but not in the greater plural. Others make it in all numbers. In the table below, the plural forms are the ones preferentially listed. References Further reading Jim Chen, First Person Plural, Analyzing the Significance of Inclusive and Exclusive We in Constitutional Interpretation Payne, Thomas E. 1997, Describing Morphosyntax, A Guide for Field Linguists, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-58224-5 Filimonova, Elena, eds. 2005. Inclusivity, Typological and Case Studies of the Inclusive-Exclusive Distinction. Amsterdam, John Benjamins Publishing Company. ISBN 90-272-2974-0.